this, I guess, the Dominican pasteles because it's half Puerto Rican and half Dominican. So the first thing I'm going to need is these are bananas. These are cooking bananas. Please don't confuse these to the eating bananas, the regular yellow bananas. That, you know, um, these are cooking bananas. Okay, Ineos in Spanish, Ineos. So I got, I think there are about 20 of them, 15 to 20 of them here. Now I have potatoes, I have um, yautia, and I have platanos. These are regular platanos. They look very much like the guineos or the bananas, the cooking bananas. So you have to be very careful. You have to know how to distinguish them. And then I have calabaza, which is um, pumpkin. Okay, and this right here is to make the dough. To make the dough of the pasteles. And I'm gonna show you now how I prepare the pastele, um, the la masa, la masa de pasteles or the dough. All right, so the first thing that I like to do is to do my sofrito, my homemade sofrito. Now, for the full recipe of my homemade sofrito, I will leave the link below in the description box. Here is a pot or caldero that I'm using with water, cold water, and I added some salt. I added some salt and I added one entire lemon. I squeezed a lemon in here and my finger is a little dark because of I peeled the platanos. You, unfortunately, you, there's no way around that you get to stain your fingers once in a while. So this is what I did. I took 25 guineos or um, green bananas and two platanos. That's what I used. And I peeled it, I threw it in there, and I peeled it, I cut it in little pieces like this. And later on with olive oil, I'm going to get the stain out. Whatever stains I have in my hand, I just rub it with olive oil and it'll go away. That's not a problem. But the reason why I'm using salt and lemon with cold water is so that the um, green bananas and the platanos don't turn black. Okay, that's to keep them fresh while I'm peeling them and ready to be uh, parade. Got in two potatoes. I'm going to be using two potatoes now. And I slice it in little pieces and I'm going to throw it in in here with the platanos and the guineos. The next ingredient that I'm going to be using for the dough is squash, butternut squash, or in Spanish, calabaza. And as you can see, I've cut, I've cut it in little pieces, and I'm going to mix it in with the rest of the ingredients for the dough. Now, the next ingredient that I'm going to add for the dough is yautia blanca. And um, this is what it looks like in its natural form. And when I peel it, it looks like this. And what I do is I cut it in small pieces like this. And then I just take away the, the covering, the, the outer layer. And then I cut it in small pieces and mix it up with the rest of the ingredients that I'm going to be using for the dough. That's it, guys. This is the last batch. This is the yautia blanca. And I mixed it with um, everything else here to make the dough. This is the dough ingredients. I'm going to put it in a food processor right now and mix everything all together. After putting it in the food processor, all the ingredients, I still have that much to do. After putting all this together in the food processor, this is how it's supposed to look like. This is the dough of the pasteles. All right, I'm going to continue to finish this up now. This is the end result of the dough. This is the end result. And this is how it's supposed to look. So now I'm going to prepare the filling 
for el relleno de carne. I'm going to be using pork. This is boneless pork. Now, as you can see, it has fat around it. Now, what I did was I took I took the pack. I'm going to use two packs, which is six pieces. This is good for a dozen, at least a dozen or two dozen um, pasteles. Now, um, what I did was I took the meat and I cut it in little small pieces like this. And I made sure that the fat was taken away. I want absolutely no fat on the meat. So as you can see, it has no fat. It's fat free. Now I'm gonna season the meat with my sofrito, which is um, onions, green peppers, red peppers, yellow peppers, orange peppers, garlic, oregano's in there. Um, a whole bunch of nice stuff is in there. And I, do, um, I also added um, cilantro and culantro. Now I'm gonna also add adobo. Um, I'm gonna use um, olive oil, um, tomato sauce. I'm gonna add a little bit more of oregano and I'm gonna add um, sazon goya. And that's how I'm going to season the meat. Let it simmer for about 60 seconds in low flame. It smells so good. Two packets of the sazon goya with the sofrito. And I'm gonna mix it all up. Okay, I've added one can of tomato sauce. Now I've added all of the meat. I'm gonna mix it all up, let it cook for a little bit. I'm gonna let it simmer in its own sauce for about two minutes. Also added um, several bay leaves just to give it a distinctive taste, and I will remove them when I'm about to serve um, the food. When I'm about to mix the meat and everything up, that's when I'll remove them. But it's just for flavor. I've added three cups of water, and I've also added um, some olives. That's to your uh, liking. It's an option, you don't have to um, add any olives, but I did. And now I'm just gonna let it boil for about five, 10 minutes. I'll be checking up on it to make sure that it doesn't dry completely. I don't want it to dry. I just want it to get tender. Enough, you know, I want the meat to get tender. Now with the chicken, it I follow the same the same steps as um, with the pork meat. I use every single ingredient that I use to season the meat and I cook it the same way. So just follow the same instructions as the pork meat when you cook your chicken meat. And I'm also using boneless chicken here. And I'm gonna cut off all the fat. I don't want any fat at all. Okay, so the pork filling is already done. And I use this right here to smash the meat and make it into little pieces. I shred it. And I also removed the olives and I cut them in half or in small slices. And I'm gonna add them back. Olives I'll put back in. And this is already done. This is ready. The filling, the pork filling is ready to go. 
now this here is the chicken filling and it's done and I left some of the juices I left juice in here because I'm gonna add some of this juice to the masa or the dough just to give it flavor an extra extra flavor but I will also remove the olives and cut them in small pieces and then I'll put it back in and um, this is done this is the chicken filling and it smells so good and it tastes so good guys this is la masa or the dough and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of the sauce from the meat and just put some over just a little bit not too much this is just to give it some taste to give it taste turn it off look at that beautiful this is the color that you want okay so after 20 minutes you can turn it off and it's done it's ready next well I'm going to be using is papel para pasteles paper for the pasteles with um, the thread and also banana leaves and this is what the paper looks like wrap the pasteles in and I'm going to show you how to wrap the pasteles now so now how I prepare the banana leaves is um, I cut it into a square and if there's any um, dry areas I'll cut it off too like this part right here this is dry so I'll just cut it off 
then I like to toast it a little bit so that it could be a little bit more crispier and shinier. Oh, and I washed this already. It's very important that you rinse it off with water. So what I use is a little um, pancake skillet. pastel paper and um, I find that it's easier to work with if you wet it just a little bit my hands are clean okay so I'm just gonna wet it just a little bit you can use a spray bottle I didn't have one on hand I have to get one so I wet it and it works better if you wet it My hands are clean, so don't worry about that. And once that is done, I will take the banana leaf and place it in the center. Then I will take my oil and I would, and I'm gonna spread some sure that none of the seeds are really are in there You don't have to add olives if you don't want to. No, I'm sorry. This is what I'm so I'm sorry about that, guys. You add the masa in the middle. I am so sorry for that blooper. I've been up all night, 4 o'clock in the morning. It's 4 o'clock right now. I've been up all night. This is the very last one. It, it took me five hours to do. So you take the masa and you spread it a little bit. You spread it out. And then you take, this is the chicken meat. going to show you how to wrap the pastel. Okay, you take the pastel, the, the paper, and you put it in half. Put it in half. And then you push the masa or the dough towards you. 
fold this up. I'm only going to do this once, so it's okay. You can always go back to this video. Always rewind. Then you fold it up again. And then you fold this one like this. Then you take one side and you squeeze it, you push it, you push it in towards the center. And then you take this side and you squeeze it in. Fold it, then you fold it once. You fold it twice. Wait, let me do it this way so you can see better. You fold it and then you fold it again. There you go. And then you take this side. Fold it, bless your arm. You fold it again. And then that's it. And then fold it this way and then you fold it this way and there you go and then you pack it in and you're ready to use the string to tie it up now that there you go that's how you do the pastel how you wrap it how to tie the pastel is you double the string and you put it down First of all, you pack them this way, double, and then you take, you take the double sided, and you take the loose side, and then you put it over, over, pull, like so. Then you separate the string. You separate the strings and you put them this way, like that. And then you flip them over. And then you go like this. You tie it like that. And then you flip it over again make another tie and when you tie your pasteles make sure that they're a little loose don't tighten it too tight because um, the masa expands when it cooks and you don't want it to be too tight like a, like a girdle you know what I'm saying so Tie it over again. Like I was saying, make sure that it's not tight. And then that's it. That's how you do it. And then over here, on your last tie, you double tie. You see how I'm, I'm leaving some space, enough where your finger can fit? That's what you need to do. Now you make another knot, and you're good. And there you go. There you go. That's how you do your pasteles. How you tie them. And you're done. Now the next step is you put them in boiling water, hot water, and you add some salt. You boil it for an hour. And you're good. You're good to go. Ready to eat after an hour. And that's it guys. I hope you enjoy. And um, thanks for watching. God bless. And besitos.